Green Revolution was primarily a technologically driven transformation of agricultural production systems, but it had significant secondary effects. So it facilitated broader structural transformation and it significantly increased incomes and food security. Since the Green Revolution, we have learned a lot about the breadth and depth of these transformation processes. And indeed, over time, the processes themselves have expanded and become more complex. It's then not a real surprise with these complex systems that if you're going to change this type of system, there are multiple drivers, policy levers, and indicators of transformation. So let's explore this a little bit. I'm going to explore it with an example of two countries. So the first country, country A, is a large agricultural economy. It's, it's pretty much through its agricultural transformation process. It has achieved top-line goals of low levels of poverty, stunting, and underweight. Country B is also an agricultural economy, but smaller and partway through its agricultural transformation. So it has not yet achieved top-line targets, but it has significant reduction in poverty, significant reduction in stunting, significant reduction in underweight over the past 20 years. This progress is agriculturally driven, and as a, for example, cereal production in both countries has more than doubled. Cereal yields uh, doubled in country A. In country B, the doubling of cereal production was about evenly split between increases in yields and increases in area. And food production more than doubled in both countries. So what are we talking about here? The first country, Brazil, is well known as an agricultural success story. This image is from the Mato Grosso in Brazil, a country that has ridden its huge agricultural success to become the world's fourth largest agricultural exporter and the eighth largest economy in the world. Drivers of this transformation include technical progress, such as genetically modified soybean varieties, policy, including science policy supportive of GMO use, and resource rights and policy, allowing relatively unimpeded access to land and water resources. The second country is Niger, and Niger has focused on reforestation. So policy has been the driving force behind this reforestation, more than 5 million hectares over a 20-year period, uh, or about a third of the arable land. Reforestation also contributed to the 67% increase in national cereal yields. Youth unemployment in Niger is 7.8%. So what's, there's good things and there's bad things about these issues. Critics of the Brazil model might point out to a notable lack of policies for preservation of biodiversity. They might suggest that the indicators of transformation, ecological indicators such as vegetative cover, a carbon footprint, water footprint, and water loss through evapotranspiration paint a much less rosy picture of what's going on in Brazil. Extreme critics might argue that in light of the SDGs and the COP21 Paris Agreement, that in fact the Brazil model does not represent a model that can be taken forward in post-2015 agriculture. In Niger, critics might say that, well, Yes, you have had some relative success in Niger, but it remains a largely poor and underdeveloped country with a miserly agriculture. So despite the big yield gains, they're still among the lowest in the world. There is little evidence of non-agricultural structural transformation. An extreme critic might even argue that given the rainfall in Niger and the predictions of global climate change, your best policy is to figure out how to get people out of the country. So the takeaway, again, is that there are multiple drivers and measures of transformation, includes policy levers, different drivers, different levels affect different systems, and what you need to drive the transformation is going to be very dependent upon the vision that your country has and what it wants to achieve. Niger wanted a more ecologically sustainable transformation, <clears throat> and they invested in that. Brazil wanted to grow the productivity and production of its agriculture, and that's what they invested in, very different patterns with successful outcomes defined by the country, but also some side effects. Mm -hmm.